Hi everyone, it's Hayley from Critical. We're bringing you real stories of people with lived experience of suicide who are doing incredible things in the suicide prevention space to kind of bust the myth that all that people with lived experience can add in suicide prevention is to tell their story. But the truth is we're so much more than just storytellers. And today you'll hear from Noelle Schwartz, who's going to talk about how she integrates her lived experience in her counselling practice and use it as, uses it as a driving force to pursue um, a change in the dentistry space to really change how they view mental health and better support students and, and dentists in their work. But I'll say no more. I'll leave it up to her. I hope you enjoy and um, please connect with us if you want to chat about this or want to share your thoughts. So right now I'm graduating in December with my master's in clinical psychology, emphasis on marriage and family therapy. Um, so I'm working at an agency as an intern um, and we actually don't see crisis clients um, technically, but the reality is I've done quite a few suicide screenings because of you know, crisis comes up, what, you know, things happen, life happens. So, so yeah, so right now I'm doing that. Um, and then once I graduate, hopefully I'll be hired somewhere and be seeing clients then too. Um, and then I'm also working to do research with suicide and dentistry and make some headway in that arena, especially dental schools. There's a huge problem in dental schools with the way dental students are treated. Um, I think it's worldwide, to be honest, but uh, I can only speak for the U.S. Um, for now. <laughs> um, but I, I would really like to be able to make some headway in that arena, make some kind of mental health change within the schools, some kind of you know, as a therapist, it's a, um, it's like a clinical mandate, a legal mandate that you practice self-care because if you're not your best self, the idea is you can't help your clients. It's not that way in dentistry. It's seen that if you need that time, then you're not a good enough, like you're not strong enough to be a dentist. And so the rate of depression is really high. You know, it's a profession where people come in and think they can say, I hate you just like, like it's nothing. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying really hard in that arena to, to reach out. I'm trying to do research. Dental schools are really like tough about not wanting anyone to let anyone in. Um, trying to get out to students, trying to collect stories like this and hopefully be able to use it to make a change. I guess in the work that I do, I'm very careful not to tell my story, to be honest. Um, but the work that I do, my story allows me to connect with people on such a deeper level even though they don't know anything about it or my story at all. Um, so I work with a lot of clients that struggle with suicidal thoughts at some times or even just really deep depression. Um, and having that story, that experience behind me allows me to connect with those dark feelings, able to go to those dark places with them um, and hold that space with them, even though they have no idea that I've been there. Um, I do think that people learn more through story. I think that by meeting people who have experienced suicide um, in any way, shape, or form, I think people learn so much more about it. And I think it's such a shame, especially in schools, like in therapy schools here, that we don't have lived experience like of everything, everything lived experience should come into the room and talk. 
because we learn through story and we learn that it's not, you know, scary and that everybody's the same and that today it's me, tomorrow it could be you. Um, that we're all equal, like everything changes, like the weather. I think about, yeah, most people in my life don't know um, currently the extent of my stories. I don't tell it because of, I don't want it to be why I'm trying to make a difference, if that makes sense. Um, exactly what this project is. Like, I don't want it to just be, I have a sad story and I made it through. And so now I can share the story. It's, I don't know if telling the story, you know, it's different here. It really is like telling the story feels very, very raw in a different way. Like you're seen differently. Um, and I think I worry that if I tell the story that I won't be able to help as much as if I don't tell the story. Um, I think we're accused a lot, at least here of like, if you have lived experience, then you're seeing a client through your lived experience, which of course, like we all are, because we all have lived experience of something and we all, like, we can't take off our perspectives. Um, but that idea that you can see things, you know, with completely, um, without your perspective. And if you share your lived experience, then there's that idea, that notion that you, you're putting too much of yourself into a client. And so I have a real fear of that. Um, but the reality is, is that my story and my lived experience is exactly what allows me to connect with the client when they're in that dark place and know what to say to keep them safe and to give them that hope with dentistry too, doing research and talking to dental students um, about mental health and suicide and trying to work in that community. Um, again, I might say that I had experiences that I attempted um, in that setting, but I don't tell, I don't tell the story. Um, there's a quote and it's by um, K. Redfield Jameson. Um, and I think, so it's from the book, An Unquiet Mind. And she's a psychologist and she eventually came out um, and explained that she had bipolar disorder and that she had struggled with suicidality. And this was like quite a while into her career. And the quote after she wrote the book or in the front of the book is, I have no idea what the long-term effects of discussing such issues so openly will be on my personal and professional life, but whatever the consequences, they are bound to be better than continuing to be silent. I am tired of hiding, tired of misspent and knotted energies, tired of the hypocrisy, and tired of acting as though I have something to hide. One is what one is, and the dishonesty of hiding behind a degree or a title or any matter of collection of words is still exactly that dishonest, necessary perhaps, but dishonest. And when I read that quote, I think about how true that is, that I have had this experience and it does very much impact how I do my work and how I see clients and why I want to work with dentistry and suicide. Um, and by not sharing it, I'm hiding, you know, and being dishonest. And there will come a point when sharing it helps people more than not sharing it.
Yeah. And I will say, so I've been slowly disclosing at work. Um, not details, but the fact that I struggle with suicidality and first it was, you know, that I have a past of it. And then, you know, recently it's come back and I've had to disclose because it's affected my ability to not to see clients or to be present with clients, but like my notes are a little later, things like that. And, um, so that's been an interesting experience. I think, you know, it's such a careful space, right? Because as a therapist, you want to make sure that you are, you're not putting yourself, you're not seeing it through your eyes, but you can't not see it through your eyes. Sorry, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, because I keep, like, I think about it all the time, right? Like we are continuously told, you know, what's you and what's the client. And that's true, except we can't, I don't think it's possible to not see things through our view. I personally wish that everybody that I worked with, I wish they would share their lived experience, mainly because with every client that comes in, um, I don't have all those experiences, but if I knew all the people who did and I could go to them and ask them and really learn from them, it would make such a difference. And I think that's where it's such a shame. Like, it's such a shame that for like, for everything that, you know, in school and in practice, we don't have people who can say like, this is what it feels like this, you know, and maybe it's not for everybody what it feels like, but for me, this is what it feel, felt like. And the more, you know, like if we had 10 people with lived experience of suicide come in and talk, like, and people really could see that they're normal people just like them and hear the story from a point of view of not like this dramatic, sad story, but from a point of view of like, this is what the pain felt like. This is what I needed in the moment. This is what could have helped or would have helped or would help, or I still go through this and this is what I need. And this is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of asking for what I need because of X, Y, Z, you know, I mean, I think, you know, like our hospitals are horrible. So being able to tell a client that I know that and that I will do everything to help keep them out of a hospital is so different. You know, it helps them feel so much safer than a therapist who doesn't know that. And then, you know, thinks that they're safest in the hospital and yeah, there's a place for it, obviously. But I think even Where I'm at, I'm still, I don't have my own practice. I don't have my own license. So I have to be really careful about honoring the agency that I work at and the licenses that I work under and what they believe in. And I will, like, I am interested to see like down the road what I decide to do when it's all on me. Um, to see how much I share and how much, you know, how much I don't. Um, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And thank you for your vulnerability. That's pretty much the con that's what I get every time. <laughs> um, and I wish it was questions because if somebody disclosed something that I don't struggle with, I would want to ask a lot of questions. You know, how does it feel? All of that. And I wish that's what I wish. I wish they would be asking questions so that they could help their clients. And when I get the, I'm so sorry. Um, I wish I had, I wish I hadn't have disclosed because I don't need, like, that's not what I'm looking for <laughs> at all. Um, and the thank you for your vulnerability again, like there's a part, it's just it, that I think like you would understand, like it's part of what we've lived through. Like, yes, we've gotten to the point where we can talk about it, but I want it 
I want people to learn from it <laughs> so they can help the, you know, people who are feeling it. Like, and again, like, so that we can like catch that pain before it even gets to that point and like see that hopelessness before it even gets to a suicidal point. And nobody asks. And that, um, and there isn't really space to space to try to teach it. And I think that that's what I wish was different. And I do, I regret it every single time <laughs> because nothing positive comes from it. I think the importance of not shaming people who have lived experience of suicide and somehow being able to see that lived experience on a continuum with all kinds of pain, psychological pain, and realizing that somebody with lived experience of suicide isn't different from anyone else. Um, they're just at a different space on that spectrum, on that line. And that can change at any moment. And I found that a lot of people try to protect themselves from that idea by shaming the person with lived experience. Um, they don't understand but it comes across as shame. And I really wish that people would have that empathy and that realization that, you know, I don't want it to happen to you. I don't want you to have to feel this, but it, you could, like something could happen tomorrow. And also, you've experienced things, you know, even the person with the best, happiest life has experienced some level of depression and sadness and just magnify that, you know. I just wish people realized that, you know, we're all, we're all in this journey together. We all suffer and shame doesn't have a place in it. So thanks, Noelle, for sharing your story here today. If you've liked this video, there's other content that you can connect with on our channel and start a conversation about how we better engage lived experience in the suicide prevention space. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Um, we're happy to have open conversations and we hope to, to see you again sometime soon. Take care of yourselves and those around you and we'll catch you later.